every time I go walk through that door, I don't know if I'm gonna come out in a body bag. That's how bad it is. That's Tony, and believe it or not, he works here. There is a great energy, and you see that from the moment you start on your first day. We like a family here. Altium is an electric battery manufacturing company in Lordstown, Ohio, a once great manufacturing town abandoned by corporate America. Thanks to massive investment in electric vehicle manufacturing from Democrats' Inflation Reduction Act, jobs are returning to Lordstown. We're bringing back U.S. manufacturing jobs, 680,000 jobs just since I took office. Good paying jobs, union jobs, middle class jobs, jobs that give you a sense of dignity. But workers on the front lines describe a different reality, one that is chaotic, unpredictable, and dangerous. We went to the heart of this booming industry to see what the electric vehicle revolution actually looks like for the workers making it possible, and to understand what it'll take to ensure EV jobs deliver for workers, not just corporate executives. This is a 2017 Chevy Cruze LT. It was built here in Lordstown, actually. It's not just a car to me, it's, it's, it's a legacy. There's a legacy to this. The first GM car rolled off the Lordstown assembly line in 1966. How soon do you need these people right now? The jobs now. We have the jobs now. For the next six decades, GM was the town's largest industrial employer and a crucial source of well-paying union jobs. This is the start of General Assembly, the trim shop. It's where my mom worked. When she got her job at Magna Seating, it changed her life. They had excellent benefits through the UAW. All of that changed in 2019. It's the end of the line for workers at the GM plant in Lordstown. After more than 50 years producing cars and other vehicles, the GM plant in Lordstown, Ohio, will close down for good today. People had to sell their homes and move away. I lost a lot of good friends, um, people that I grew up with. More than 1,300 workers lost their jobs. But a year after this devastating blow, GM made an announcement that sparked some hope. This is the Ultium battery from General Motors. The largest American auto manufacturer is going all in on EV. Lordstown's Ultium sales plant is up and running. It's expected to create more than 11,000 jobs, including 1,500 operations jobs at the Lordstown facility. We knew this could be the future. This could bring industry back to Lordstown. And here we are, we have the opportunity to make the battery that will power the future. Altium got a two and a half billion dollar loan from the Department of Energy to build three plants and create more than 11,000 jobs. But the reality on the ground is a lot more grim. Well over a thousand. Altium sells is a great place to work. It is not a great place to work if you were on that floor producing the product that they so rave about that's so great and this is the future. There's a dirty, dirty behind the scenes that's going on to get to that future here at Altium. Altium workers describe minimal training and exposure to hazardous chemicals and unsafe working conditions. Electrocutions are, were pretty common when I first was hired. Um, I actually myself sustained uh, an electrical injury. Um, my left hand brushed up against one of our tab leads um, on the battery cell, and I was given a jolt of electricity. At least 22 people suffered injuries or illness at the plant in just the first five months of 2023. Most recently, Tony's department was closed for an air quality inspection mandated by the Environmental Protection Agency. Despite mounting evidence of safety hazards at the plant, workers who voice concerns about conditions often face severe consequences. I have seen several members in mixing um, in our cathode mixing department that were um, retaliated against by management for raising a, a grave safety issue in their department. They were all suspended pending investigation without pay. Which brings us to another problem, the pay. The new Altium factory was built right next to the old GM one. This time, GM teamed up with LG to create a separate company called Altium. 
That way, they don't have to honor the UAW contract at GM. There are unionized auto workers who, through decades of struggle, have won middle class wages and benefits. A typical unionized powertrain assembly worker, for example, earns about $60 an hour in wages and benefits. All team workers, by contrast, start at $16.50 an hour. It was just like a slap in the face, like an are you kidding me moment. I'm, I'm, I'm out here doing this dangerous job for you, and you're not even going to compensate me properly for it. All this federal money is coming in but it's not trickling down to the employees. We are making poverty wages. People are frustrated, people are tired, and people are ready to fight back because this company is driving them further and further to the bottom. Altium workers unionized with the UAW in 2022, and they're working on negotiating their first contract. The bargaining process has been nothing but tumultuous, chaos, I would say. Over and over again, we're told one thing by the company and then they turn around and do something completely opposite. Um, they won't give us a wage proposal. When asked for comment, Altium said, Altium sells is committed to the collective bargaining process. But the UAW says the company has refused to come anywhere close to the GM standard. Here's the thing, with federal and state money flowing to companies like Altium and GM, there's actually a real opportunity to make sure the jobs of the future rebuild the middle class. Unlike other federal grants, the one Altium got doesn't mandate the company pay a specific wage. I wish President Biden actually came down here and you know, just took a walk throughout our, our production floor and actually saw some of the jobs that employees are doing on this floor. We're going to need the federal government to do more in terms of enforcement and holding accountable companies that, that fall short. They need to stop giving taxpayer dollars to companies that essentially treat their workers like gum on the bottom of a boot. This necessary change might be happening with newer loans. Starting in May 2023, in order to receive loans from the Department of Energy, companies have to fill out a community benefits plan outlining their commitments to provide decent wages and safe working conditions, as well as allow workers to unionize. There is real power in terms of enforcing these contracts as long as the government is willing to exercise that authority. But experts say there's still more the federal government and states could do for workers at all plants that get taxpayer funds. We'd want policymakers to adopt wage standards to ensure that when government supports private sector corporations, their manufacturing workers are paid market wages and benefits. We have these sorts of standards in other sectors like construction. We've had them for nearly 100 years and manufacturing workers deserve the same. We're going to be making the future whenever we're talking about federal money being used for these plants. These need to be good paying jobs and they need to be union jobs. Hi, thanks for watching our video. If you like this story and you want more stories like this, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel to get more, more perfect union in your feed. And if you have stories that you want us to investigate, drop them in the comments below.